Good morning, everybody. Yeah, I got, I, I think that was two. It's amazing. Let's stand up. I'm going to pray for us and we're going to sing. Jesus, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your character this morning. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you are the direct representation of the Father. And the stories you tell of the Father tell of your character. The story of the prodigal son, the Father, is standing out, looking over the balcony, waiting to see his son. And we thank you that you're waiting for us this morning. You're longing to show mercy to us. You're longing to show your love to us this morning. We ask that you bless the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for Teach. 
Teach us to love. Teach us to love. For we know love flows first from above. Oh God, let your grace flow through this place. So we You may be seated. My name is Pastor Sean Baker. I'm one of the pastors here at Bethany Lutheran, and it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord with you. On your way in, you should have received one of these bulletins, and on this bulletin, it has a perforated edge, a side you can tear off. The front side, mark your attendance. We want to know you're here worshiping with us. And on the back side, it has any prayer requests that you may have that the pastoral staff, the church staff can be praying for you and uplifting you in your walk with the Lord. Also in this bulletin that you received, you should have a, a Christmas slip of paper. And, and on this paper, on this insert, it has all the different Christmas services that we're going to have here at Bethany. So Christmas Eve, we have four different services and they all kind of have their own different flavor. Uh, the 9 p.m. service is candlelight service. There will be communion there. And if you want to hear our praise band play, at 3 o'clock you can come. And it's a contemporary kind of feel, kind of service. Um, and then Christmas Day, we have one service at 10 o'clock in the morning. And that is a traditional service with communion as well. Another thing to put on your radar is next Sunday, December 19th at 1.30 in the afternoon, right back in the sanctuary, we're going to have a special voters meeting where we're going to talk about what ministry looks like in Southern Johnson County. I ask that you attend, and I ask that you keep that in your prayers, that the discussion may be peace-filled, may be Christ-centered, and that His will may be done through it all. Those are all the announcements I have for you this morning. I invite you to rise and please greet each other. Greet the people sitting next to you. Give them a handshake. Give them a fist bump and an elbow, an elbow bump, right? Share the peace of the Lord. <laughs>
All right, this is great, this is great, yeah. I like all the fellowship, but I invite you to go back to your pew as we begin our service this morning. We begin our service this morning in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. We go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today as people in need of your forgiveness. Instead of being content with you and your work for us on the cross, we chase after things in the world looking for fulfillment. We pray for your forgiveness and we pray that you cover us today with the blood of Jesus, the blood of our Messiah. We ask this in your son's name. Amen. Well, the good news is for you, Bethany, that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he has come. And he's come and he, he's taken your sin away from you, put it on himself. He went to that cross. He died and he rose again. And giving and rising, he gave you life in God's name, life that has no end. And it's a joy and a privilege as a called and ordained servant of Jesus. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. You may be seated for the reading. The epistle reading comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. And God, I look you're where my help comes from Give me wisdom Cause you know just what to do
The gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 7, verses 18 to 28. John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is a man who does not fall away on account of me. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, things, they weren't going well. This isn't how John imagined it would be. John, John the Baptist, the chosen one by God, the, the one who was going to come prepare the way for the Lord, the one who's going to make straight his paths. Instead of preparing the way for the Lord, John, he was sitting in a jail cell. And as he was sitting in a jail cell, he was thinking to himself, what other things could I do to get the world ready? What other things could I do to, to get the world ready for the coming Messiah, the, the promised one, the one we're all waiting for? And as John was sitting there thinking those thoughts, some of his followers came up to the jail cell. And they began to tell John uh, about the news that everyone in the land was talking about. They told him about a man who in the town of Capernaum raised a Roman soldier's servant. He was, he was very sick, and he, and he healed him by touching him. And then they also told him about this same man who in the village of Nain, he raised the widow's only son from the dead. And John, after hearing about this man, he thought to himself, could this be the one? Could this be the one that we're waiting for? Could this be the promised Messiah that we're all looking for? But John, he wanted to be sure. So he sent two of his followers, two followers that he could trust with a very important mission. And he sent them to go and find this man. Go and talk to this man. Go and talk to Jesus. Well, these two followers, they found Jesus pretty quick. J Jesus, he wasn't hard to find. He, he was the one that all the crowds were gathered around. He was the one that everybody flocked to because they wanted to be healed. They wanted to hear what he had to say. And John's followers, they saw the massive crowd, and they wiggled their way to the front, like, like someone wiggles their way to the front of a line when they're shopping at the mall the day before Christmas Eve. And they finally, they finally got to the front. They, they finally got to see Jesus face to face. And they got the attention of Jesus. And they said to Jesus, Jesus, we're John the Baptist. We're his followers. And he sent us to ask you a question. He told us to ask you, are you the one who was to come? Or should we keep looking for another? And Jesus, he heard their question, but he didn't answer them. 
Before he could answer them, somebody in the large crowd brought before Jesus someone who was sick. And Jesus, he laid his hand on the sick man. And all of a sudden, he was healed. And then another person in the crowd, they brought before Jesus someone who had an evil spirit. And Jesus, again, he, he laid his hand on the man who had an evil spirit. And suddenly, the man was set free. The evil spirit was gone. Somebody else in the crowd, they brought before Jesus somebody who was blind, and Jesus, he touched the blind man's eyes. And suddenly, the man could see. And this happened again and again and again in the presence of John's followers. And after Jesus was done, after he was done healing many people in the crowd, he, he turned to John's followers and he smiled at them. And he said, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. That the blind receive their sight, the lame can walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf they can hear, the dead are raised up. The, the poor have good news preached to them. And that's exactly what John's followers did. They were so excited to tell John what they had seen. Their, their eyes, they couldn't believe it. They said to themselves, this is so much better than just hearing about it. But seeing about it, seeing it is so much greater. So they ran as fast as they could to get to John's jail cell because they had such great news to tell John. And they told John what they saw. They said to John, John, we saw the people who were blind. They, they got their sight back. We saw the lepers who were crippled. They, they can walk again. We saw people who had evil spirits, who had sickness. All of a sudden, they were healed. We, we saw it all, John. But then they said to John, John, he never answered our question. John, what does this mean? Is this the one that we were looking for? Is this the one that we've been waiting for? I thought the Messiah, they said, was going to come and free us from the Romans. They said to John, I, I thought the Messiah was going to come and restore the kingdom of Israel like it was way back when King David was king. They said to John, John, I thought the Messiah was going to come and, and judge all these evil nations around us to set us free. And John, he, he heard them and he said to them and he smiled. He said, yes, yes. This is the Messiah, the one we've been waiting for, the one we've been looking for. He's here. We don't have to keep searching. We don't have to keep looking. The Messiah is here, John said. And John said, he not only opened the eyes of the blind, but he opened my eyes so that I can see the truth, so that I can see the reality that the Messiah, the one we've been waiting for, is here. John said, we don't have to keep looking. We don't have to keep searching. The Messiah is here. Well, Christmas time is a busy time of the year for a lot of people. Kids in school and, and people in the working world, this is one of the busiest times of the year. Kids in school and, and college students, they're busy cramming those, those last semester projects. You know those big projects that got assigned way at the beginning of the semester and, and they procrastinated on, so they have to stay up all late, and all, they have to stay up all night and, and, and cram to get that big project done. People in the working world, they have to finish up their final year reports before people can go on vacation with their families. This is a busy time of the year. But kids in school and people in the working world, they want to succeed. Kids in school, they, they want to get straight A's. People in the working world, they want to get that promotion. They, they want to get that pay raise. And when their hard work finally pays off, they're excited. They're beyond thrilled. When, when kids in school, when they get that report card in the mail that says straight A's, they're pumped. They're excited. When, when people in the working world, when they see their hard work pay off and they finally get that promotion, when they finally get that raise, they are pumped. They're excited. When they see their hard work lead to success, that brings them some sense of happiness. But eventually, the happiness of their success, it goes away. It fades pretty quickly. Kids in school, when you start a new quarter or a new semester, the happiness of your grades from last semester or last quarter, 
that quickly fades away. People in the working world, the, the happiness of success with your job promotion, that quickly fades away when the next big fire at work is your responsibility to put out, it is your responsibility to fix. And in the emptiness of, of the happiness of success, when, when that fades away, people are left asking the question, was this what I've been looking for? Or should I keep looking for another? This Christmas season is a season filled with joy as people get to spend time with their family members. Maybe some family members they don't get to see very often. Some people right now are even planning trips to, to go visit other people in their hometowns or, or they're planning to have people come and visit them. And doing the typical Christmas activities with your family, that brings people joy. Spending time in the kitchen, baking those delicious Christmas cookies with your family, that, that brings people joy. Bundling up when it's cold outside to, to go look at other people's Christmas lights with your family, that brings people joy. Sitting on the couch, cuddled up, drinking that nice warm mug of hot cocoa, watching your favorite Christmas movie, mine's a wonderful life, by the way, but that brings you joy. But eventually, the joy of the Christmas season, it goes away. Eventually, people, they have to go back to their hometowns. Eventually, people have to go back to work. Other people have to go back to school. And in the emptiness of that joy that you felt on Christmas time, people are left asking the question, was this all I've been waiting for all year? Or should I keep looking for another? Or this time of year, this is the time of year where people take a lot of vacation. People in work, they take off a few days here and a few days there. This time of year, kids, they, they get an extended break from studies, two or three weeks away from the books, away from the classes. And when people are away, they're away from their normal routine, they say that they feel this peace because they don't have to deal with the everyday stress. They don't have to deal with the work emails or the school emails. They can just spend time with family. And as people are sitting on the beach or if they're hiking in the mountains, they say that they feel this peace, this peace while they're on vacation. But eventually, the vacation has to end. Eventually, the peace you once felt while you were traveling with people on vacation, eventually, that fades away. And in the emptiness of that peace, people are left asking the question, was this all I was waiting for? Or should I keep on looking for another? Do you and I today, as Christian people, as people who know that the Messiah has come, do we live as people who have seen and heard that the Messiah has come, or, or, or do we keep looking for another? This Christmas season where we prepare for Jesus coming as a little tiny baby, born in the manger in Bethlehem for you and me. Do we focus on the fact that the Messiah is come? Or do we keep on looking for another? It's easy to get distracted by the things in this world. The things in this world that try to find happiness, to try to find everlasting joy and everlasting peace in things like time with family, Christmas activities, school or work. But eventually, no matter how great those things are, no matter how much joy they bring you, eventually they're going to fail us. Eventually the happiness that you feel, eventually it's going to fade. Eventually the joy and the peace that you feel, eventually it's going to go away. We live in a broken world, a broken world filled with sin, a broken world filled with pain and suffering. A world where joy and peace, eventually, they fade away. And God, out of his great love and mercy, he saw a world searching blindly for fulfillment, and they were looking in all the wrong places. He saw us in the emptiness of our searching. And in response, out of his love and mercy for you, he sent his one and only son. He sent the promised one. He sent the Messiah 
to come and reveal his great love, the love that he has for you. And Jesus Christ, he came to this world as the promised one, as the Messiah, and he touched your eyes, he touched your ears, so that you may see, so that you may hear the truth that you are loved by God, that you are forgiven by God. Jesus Christ, he came and he touched your spiritual life, and he raised them from death to life, to give you life in God's kingdom that has no end. And Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he came to this world, he took your sins upon himself, he went to the cross, he died, he rose again, giving you life in his name, revealing the truth of God's amazing love for you, God's amazing forgiveness for you, the forgiveness that never goes away. And because the Messiah, Jesus Christ, has come into the world, we no longer have to keep looking. We no longer have to keep searching. We can say like John, the Messiah is here. The Messiah is here. We don't have to keep looking because he's here. And in the work of Christ, God's promises are fulfilled. God's promises for you. Promises of peace with God that never goes away. Promises of joy, knowing that you're saved through the work of Christ. Promises of love and mercy and forgiveness. Things that will never fade away. So as people who have heard, as people who have seen the truth that you are loved by God, that you are forgiven by God, that the Messiah has come, we no longer have to keep looking for everlasting peace in our time on vacation. We no longer have to keep looking for everlasting joy as we celebrate the Christmas season, baking the cookies and watching our favorite Christmas movies. We no longer have to keep looking for everlasting happiness in our work or in our jobs or, or in our schooling because the Messiah has come. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, he's opened your eyes, he's opened your ears. He's revealed the truth to you, that you are loved, that you are forgiven by God, that you are saved by God, and you, because of him, you have everlasting life, life that never fades away, life that never ends, life in God's kingdom that has no end. The Messiah, he has come. So we no longer have to keep looking. We no longer have to keep searching. The Messiah has come, and he's come for you. Now may the grace of God, the God who loved you so much that he sent his only son, the Messiah, into the world, may he guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite the band up front as they will lead us in our song. you guys to stand and we'll sing together. Yes, that was a joke. That was late coming up. You are God in heaven and I am here on earth so I'll let my words be few Jesus I am so in love with you Thank you. 
sing the simplest mm, the simplest of all love songs I want to bring to you so I'll let my words be few sing Jesus of all love songs Oh, I want to bring to you So I'll let my words be few we'll Sing Jesus Oh, Jesus I Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have poured out upon us. And the greatest blessing, your Son, the Messiah, our Savior. Father, you acted out of your mercy as you have freely invited us into your family through the gift of baptism. And today we rejoice and celebrate with those who are remembering that day. And today we especially lift up Dan, Tyler, Beth, Jacob, Janet, Ryan, Luke, Joshua, Nancy, Dylan, Nadine, Aaron, John, and Allison. Lord, continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon them, to grow them and shape them, to be reflections of you in this world. Father in heaven, we thank you for the many ministries that take place here at Bethany. And we pray for the upcoming voters meeting that will determine what ministry looks like in Southern Johnson County. We pray, Lord, that you continue to guide us and lead us, that your will may be done in it all. Father in heaven, we give thanks for the many workers that you have raised up to work in your harvest field, in your missions fields, Lord. And today we pray for Heather, as she discerns the call that we have extended her to be the director of Christian education here at Bethany. Lord, we pray that she may listen to you and listen to your guidance and direction. And again, Lord, that your will may be done in it all. Father in heaven, we thank you for our school and our preschool. As the school kids today, they sang at the 830 service. And they're putting on their Christmas program December 20th, Lord. 
We pray for the teachers. We pray for our principal and the students that they will continue to use their talents and gifts in service to you and your kingdom and that they will continue to grow in relationship and knowledge of you every day. Father in heaven, we thank you for this Advent season where we celebrate the amazing way you came into this world to shower us with your love. Continue to prepare our hearts and our minds to prepare for that second Advent when you're going to come back and judge the living and the dead, when you're going to come back and claim us to be your own, to be in your kingdom forever, your kingdom that has no end. Heavenly Father, we have many people on our minds in need of your healing. And today we especially lift up Al, Barb, Joyce and Charles, Iola, Beth, John, Renee, Bill, and Marie. Be with them, Lord, and pour out your Holy Spirit, your spirit of peace in the difficult time that they are facing. Lord, work with the doctors and nurses that are working with them, that if it be your will, that they may receive that healing, that healing that comes from you. Father in heaven, be with those who are also expecting children. Be with Lauren and Andrew. Be with myself and Molly. Be with Justin and Emily and Melissa and Tori. Father, you have knit us together in your womb. Be with Lauren, Molly, Emily, and Melissa and their unborn children, and we pray for continued health, that they may be healthy, that the children may be healthy, Lord, and equip us as parents to lead them and, and point them to the amazing love that you have for them and you have for the whole world. Father in heaven, you're with us as in times of joy, and you're also with us as we grieve. And today we ask that you be with a family and friends of James as they mourn his loss, as they feel that sadness, Lord. Allow them to cling to the hope and the promise that you have given us through the work of your son, through the work of your son conquering death once and for all for us. Allow them to cling to that hope, cling to the promise of the resurrection of the dead and the life that we have because of our Messiah, because of your son, Jesus Christ. We ask all of this in your son's holy and precious name, and we now pray the prayer together that your son, our Savior, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bethany, hear the blessing of the Lord to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch him pray. Find in me thine all and all. Sing Jesus. Oh, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Oh, sin, I left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Sing Jesus, oh Jesus, paid it. Oh, sin. 